My second visit in Kent on the 26th of February 2012 was to a, a, another family who have recently rescued, I mean recently by three weeks ago, rescued a Staffordshire Cross Labrador male, about nine months old, and they are its, I think, third or fourth home. The reasons being given in the past for giving it up are boisterous, destructive behaviour, which is fine, yeah, that's fairly common if it's dealt with properly it, it isn't a problem but this dog has been brought in from Battersea living with the family for three weeks and they prepared a, a lovely list of the things they wanted to work on which is fairly common when I go and see people and it's always a big help because it, sh it shows their anxieties now they lived in a very nice location they had about a two acre garden with a house they were in the process of renovating and doing up which you would think would be the ideal environment for a young for a rescue dog to come into. In the country, lots of space, freedom, apparently a perfect location. No. Because this is where we fall as owners into a very common trap. They've brought the dog home, closed the gate, everything the perimeter is fairly secure, and they've said, Well, you know, go enjoy yourself. So as soon as the dog has come home, his expectation has been set that you can do whatever you want to do with no regard for us. That is probably the very reason that he's been given up in the first place, is the fact he does exactly what he wants to do. The children, they had two children, I think it was five and six, I think, who couldn't walk, Ryder was the dog's name, on the lead, because he would pull so much. He wouldn't come back just in the garden when he was called. If horses walk past, and bear in mind we're in rural Kent here, if horses walk past, he would rush at the fence barking. So there was a lot of things that the family could see were starting to develop into potential problems, behavioural-wise. So it was a, a really nice session to, to go down there and show them with his brand new dog, three weeks in, how to retrain him, how to communicate with him properly, how to show him how to behave, and invariably that, use, that needs a lead. If you give a dog complete freedom, it works against us because then our only, re, our only course of communication is verbal, which invariably means we're telling him off at a distance or trying to call him back and he's refusing. Either way, he gets a lot of attention for not doing as he's told. So by using the long line, we start to reshape the dog's expectation of how he behaves by letting him know that he's got to come with you, he's got to follow you, and when he does follow you, he gets lots of praise for it. So we're shaping a behaviour in a dog that's never had behaviour shaped in the past, except the behaviours that you don't want. So it's a massive learning curve for the dog and the family. Superb! They did very, very well. Very, very well. And they're going to have, I mean, the dog will make them a, a gorgeous family dog, it really will. And they're now on the right path to getting that conviction into themselves that they can do it and into the dog. So a very good visit.